Hey, yeah, that shit's funny right there. That one right there is just cool. Thing. <laughs> that kind of shit out there, boy. So, I hope <laughs> Because it's, man, a job is a fucking job, bro. That's fucking bullshit. You can't find no butter for no job. Bro. Boy, DJ Lil <laughs> Ann. Share this on my thing right now. Watch, they're gonna pick his ass right now. Ooh, already, already. We we good? We good. We what's good? There? What's good? Oh yeah, we, we on. live. Yes, sir. The Riding High Podcast. What's the deal? What's the your deal? boy DJ Lil King? I got my boy Droopy M up in here. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. And I'm gonna introduce the new host today, man. We got. Someone repping for the younger generation up in here, you know what I'm saying? He's a up and coming musician from out of the corporate scene, you know what I'm saying? He's been putting the dime real tough, like coming real hard the past couple of months, the last year or two that he's been putting it down, you know what I'm saying? Like, boy, I ain't playing no games with him. You see him all on social media, all on Instagram, all on goddamn. Facebook, all that good shit, boy, doing videos. He's Hazi 95, all that. All that. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah, oh, yeah. Hazi 95 and all that. Interviews on, with the, you know, on Z95, boy, uh, putting it down with Fat Man the Boss. He's, I want to say, almost like bridging the gap between like the old school and, 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 the, young, and the young school. You know what I'm saying? Like, going to introduce my boy, Cinco Hendrix, man. Go on. Let yeah, him know sir, what he you means, know man. It's your boy, Cinco Hendrix, you know. On the Riding Hot podcast, you know, some great uh, host, co host. You know, y'all tap in tonight. We're talking about a lot. Let's get it. For sure, for sure. We're going to start it off with Big Scars family and all that shit that went down. Did y'all see that? Yeah. With the, uh, what was it? The, uh, what happened? It, it was like one of the cousins. Said that Gucci Man didn't pay for the funeral, and Gucci Man pulled out receipts that yeah, showed that he paid for, for the it. funeral. And he also, the family was also saying that Gucci Man asked for the chains back. But then, like a couple of days later, Big Scars Daddy came out and basically said that Gucci did basically pay for everything, and that people just needed to chill out and calm down and shit like that. Oh, he said that he so did he, pay so for he it. So he did pay for the, it. The daddy oh, did. Shit. The daddy came out a couple of days later and said that Gucci did pay for it. It was like the cousins and all the youngsters that were basically saying, "Fuck Gucci, we gonna get it back in blood and all like, this are shit." You right. yeah. How the fuck with Gucci like that, man? Yeah, because basically he had. They said he asked for the chains back and that he said he was gonna pay for the funeral, but then he basically said a couple of days later that he couldn't pay for the funeral because. He was gonna take his his wife's birthday or something was coming up like that. Yeah, and his daddy, uh, Scar's daddy, ended up coming out a couple of days later after they was all talking shit on social media. They're going back and forth. And then uh, Gucci Man's wife posted the receipts. Yeah, I seen that too. To the uh, from the funeral home. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And basically said we paid for it and everything. Okay, so, and then Big Scar's um, daddy came out a couple of days later and said that Gucci uh, did pay for the funeral and everything. That's crazy. They said that uh, I think like his cousins or his brothers was like shooting music videos with the chains. Yeah, on. yeah. All his family and all his family members were all on social media like wearing the the, know, the, the 1017 hey, chain and all that. Hey, Cloud is a motherfucker, bro. Yeah, exactly. The Cloud is a motherfucker, right bro. Yeah, that shit's crazy, man. I can't believe that, man. That's wild. Why even? Why even disrespect someone's name like that, man, when it's taking care of y'all? That's just wild, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then it got to the point where even some random Big Scar fan, or it may have been one of his relatives, but I, I want to say it was a fan, even called the funeral home to ask <laughs> if Gucci paid for the funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. 
Hey man, they wild dog. God, that's damn. too much, man. Hell yeah, that's too much, bro. That's what I think about it, man. I think it's too much, bro. I think clout. I think I think it's all known but clout, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't understand why people would do something like that, though, especially with someone like that who's taking care of you. I think wouldn't it be better to get on his good graces? Was it on Gucci to pay for the funeral? No, nah, it's not on Gucci. Uh, why is it on Gucci to pay for the funeral? There were some. There were a lot of people. The cobblers basically said, "I would have sent some flowers." And said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh. but I mean, but like, the, but this is the thing. Like, what was what was the relationship between him and Gucci though? Was it was he like was he was like, he was so signed to, to Gucci? He was a ten seventeen artist. Okay, but I'm okay, okay. He was signed to Gucci though. But was he like? Fucking like was his like his homeboy? You know what I'm saying? I don't know their personal relationship, but I know he was he was one of the 1017 artists for Damn Show, yeah. and he was I repping real that, hard. He always would have the chain on everywhere he went. Out of respect, like yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying. But it's not really up to him to be paying for shit, though. You it's know not on him yeah. to pay for the funeral. It's not up to him, though. You know, you can't you can't expect people to pay for you for your shit, though. You know what I'm yes. saying? At the end of the day, bro, this is wild, man. And I want to say, what did he do? Did he die of a drug overdose? Was that what it was? I think it was a drug. Yeah, overdose. he died of yeah. a drug overdose. I think it was like accidental too. Yeah, accident, and that that goes back to what? How old uh, was he? Shit, 20, like, 20, he was young. I think 23, 24, like something like that. Let's see. Probably like twenty-two, I think. Twenty-two. Yeah, he was young, man. He was experimenting yeah, was, and shit, dog. Young twenties for sure. Damn, that's fucked. Yeah, up, he was man. twenty-two. Damn, twenty-two. That's shit crazy. Hell he was yeah. just trying to pop too, like. Yeah, hell yeah. He was just basically getting like a little his little shine on the little yeah. award shows and shit yeah. like that. You he, know was barely, he was barely coming up. That's crazy. fucked hell up. Man. Yeah. Especially at that young of an age, man. I can't believe that, man. That's wild, bro. But I did see him at an award show and they interviewed him, man. I can't remember what no, it was a Rolling Loud. That's what it was. It was Rolling Loud. You know, Rolling Loud, like on YouTube, they do like the behind the scenes and they like interview the different artists and stuff. Well, this dude was back there getting interviewed, and he was just so fucked up. He couldn't even keep his eyes closed. He was just, like, not on no fucked up, like, on, like, like, like some meth type shit, but he was just, like, twitching back and forth, like, damn, they're, like, fought, like he was on some, like, Xanax bars or something, just, or some oh, perks. He, yeah, he was out, he was back there nodding out. And nodding shit. out yeah. and shit like that. He ended up drop, dropping his blunt. He drops his blunt. He grabs his phone and say, I need to call my bitch, because somebody <laughs> might be fucking my bitch since I dropped the <laughs> blunt. <laughs> that shit. He calls his girl. She doesn't she answer, answer the phone. He says, oh, man, somebody fucking my fuck bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, he was a funny-ass dude. He was like he was like a character. I had followed him on Instagram and shit like that. But whenever you just do it no drugs and you're just going overboard and shit like that, like. You got to watch yeah. out, man. And that, 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 I mean, like, not to be fucked up and say it, but that falls on the person that's doing the drugs. You can't be sitting here taking all these drugs. And whenever you pass away, your family be mad because. Your boss don't want to pay for your funeral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It'd have been different, man. If he got, he would have got shot or something like that over there on a show or something. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. A whole yeah, yeah. Situation, man. If it was in Gucci's hands, it would have been a whole different situation. But an overdose like that, and if he wasn't even around Gucci, man, I, I wouldn't have paid for shit. But yeah, he did pay for the funeral. He did pay for the funeral, for sure. We're gonna move on to the next subject. We're gonna uh, let's talk to the the, uh, the lady cop that got fired. <laughs> from the force in Tennessee for sleeping with like half the force. Y'all see that one? On the cool, like you can't miss that one. <laughs> all I, all I, I see right like now. memes of that hoe, but I don't really know what happened. Oh. I seen like a lot of memes of that hoe. That's what was. You kind of know the backstory. Of that I one? don't really know the backstory of that man. The backstory of that one was she was like uh, she had just got like hired to the force or been she had just got sworn in as an officer. I want to say like a couple of months ago, maybe like less than six months ago, she had just got sworn in and she. Uh, Basically was like having relations with different dudes that were on the force. And it was to the point where they were having like, uh, the cops were like having parties outside of work and she would be at the parties like flashing everybody and shit like that. Just on okay. some wild ass shit. And she even, uh, gave oral sex to two different dudes on the property of the police department. Oh, oh really? She on some Cal Allen shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was a white girl, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Like that shit. yeah. Hey, that's wild, man. Yeah, that's wild. So, like, how did they find out? Because one of the uh, the mayor got a tip, and whenever the mayor got a tip, he got I guess he started doing like investigating or some shit like that. And initially, whenever they called in, like some of the officers and in, in, uh, doing the interviews and investigations, like they all denied it. But then whenever somebody like ended up coming clean, one of the and one of the dudes, one of the black dudes basically said 
that he about to lose his whole family and shit behind oh, this shit. shit. Are you serious? There was like a long article and shit. Yeah, one of the dudes was like, man, I'm about to lose my job and my whole family. He ended up getting fired and everything, too. Wow. Yes. I want to say like four different uh, male officers went down and then the female officer went down, too. I saw a meme that had the... Uh... <laughs> the memes is going crazy. <laughs> I saw a meme that had that she had it with the... What the, what the fuck was it? Was a trustee and a dog, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that was making me laugh like a motherfucker. They had the meme with all the, with all the dudes and then they even had the trustee and the dog. Man, yeah, that's damn, wild, baby. man. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I don't... You know what, really, in all honesty, man. And they're saying that she was on the clock each time. That's fucked up whoever snitched. And that they bad. were sending videos to other cops, too. Well, I saw fucking Michael White made a post earlier, and it pretty much said the person who snitched was the person who didn't get to. Didn't get no head. <laughs> hey, it's always that one, bro. Like that. It's always that motherfucker, That's what Michael bro. White has said. <laughs> always fucks it up. That's always one that fucks it up for everybody, man. God damn. Uh, I don't know, man. Community host for the streets, bro. The, that's why I was going to get like, does shit go down like that at regular? Man, I'll be honest, I ain't had a regular job in maybe shit fucking man, hey, years. Man, shit goes that, down like that at regular jobs. Shit goes bro. down like that at regular jobs. Man, bro, look, man, I remember once I was working at Popeyes right there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I remember once I was working at Popeyes, man, and fucking, uh, yeah, uh, the manager, the manager, some dude was back there, man, fucking in the, in the, in the freezer and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? The freezer. Yeah, that's crazy. Crazy. It happens at work, bro. You see, you, you be surprised, man. You yeah. know though, you know when they talk about them uh them work boyfriends and shit? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. When they that's got the memes and all yeah. that shit. Like that. that's, that's real shit, dog. God damn. That just proved it right there. That's <laughs> <what it is. laughs> And I don't know, oh, I don't know. She was mad if she was like, what was she? She was engaged or she was married or some shit like that. She murdered a white boy, right? Yeah, and I don't know if he dropped her or if he, or if he nah, I saw the thing. He said was, he, stuck, he stuck him by her side. He stuck him by her side. She was like literally like kissing dudes and shit like at parties while he was like standing right there and he was basically telling other people that he wasn't down with it, but she was just still going with it. Nah, he was down with it, though. That shit crazy. He was down with it. God damn. Because if he wasn't really down with it, man, he would have slapped the shit out of her, dog. She was happy to you go to work, nigga. She, she, was <laughs> she was happy to go to work. She was happy to go to work, yeah. Early as fuck. Yeah, officer, officer Megan Hall. Yeah, officer, officer Megan Hall. And a fellow law officer allegedly engaged in a wild sex capades that included oh, attending dirty pictures. That's crazy. That's crazy. With six Taking co-workers? God girl, damn, I thought it was At fun. a girl's gone wild hop to a party. Damn, okay. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I feel it. Hey, this, See, this, I this, said this, it. This. I said it correctly. I said oral sex with two officers <laughs> at the police station. <laughs> I said it correctly. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm more than likely, man. Hell no, she was a fucking goddamn. She was a goddamn company, goddamn head doctor, man. Shit. <laughs> Hey, they were just passing her around. <laughs> yeah. yep, that's what it seemed like to me. Shit. Hey, hey, you know what? Hey, how many of you? Th- how many of them you think that fucker tried to cover, dog? How many of you think they try to cover, dog? When one of them supposedly like had a threesome with her and his wife and all this different type shit, like they was getting down over there in that little what was it, Laverne, Laverne, Tennessee? Like they was getting down over there like a motherfucker shit. Man, that's wild right there, bro. I feel, yeah. I feel sorry for her husband, man. Somebody said that he was jealous. That's why he ran her mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I said, yeah. hell, yo. Yeah, hell, yeah. And yeah, he sent a tip on the paper talking about, look at the cameras at this time. All right, right? She beat the corpus teacher from King High School. Damn. Damn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That shit Corpus. was all over like Dr. Phil and shit, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No that shit. shit. Yeah, that shit was crazy. Alrighty. I want you to pull this one up right quick. Uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, they just unveiled a new MLK statue. Let's put it up and let's see what y'all think about this. Is it a badly made statue? Man, that motherfucker was huge, but let's. I hope it's not a badly made statue, man. Yeah, MLK statue. Or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. He said that. <laughs> yeah. That's the statue right there? Yeah. yeah. What the fuck is that? Like him hugging his wife, but it's just the arms. Yeah, 
Yeah, that shit. See, that's like his wife's arm at the bottom with the bracelet, and then I guess it's like his, his arm at the top, like, yeah. Like, they holding a big bear? That's supposed to be like his <laughs> arm at the top. <laughs> <laughs> he said a big bear. It's like they proud of what they just caught. God damn. Let's caught this boy right here in the ocean, boy. <laughs> right here off that, off that fucking red dot pier. What is that, dude? You can move that bottle right there. Just please, just move it to the side. Yeah. Okay, I see the hands. Okay, I see the hands. I see the arms. I see the bracelet. I don't know what. Oh, it's another arm. Okay, yeah. yeah it's the. They're holding, each, they're other's holding each other's arms. But there's no head, and now then then people were that on. Takes us back to the cop topic. Nah. <laughs> but that takes us. <laughs> A lot of people were saying, it, it, like, 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 what's like, it defeats the purpose of like, like, having a statue with no head because that, like you say, when you said with the cap shit, it said going back in time to where black people were getting lynched and shit like that. So it's almost like, oh shit, I ain't you know what I'm saying? Like just like a, where yeah. it's just a fucking statue with some arms, like, yeah. Does it even have a thing that, that says it's for Martin Luther King? Angle. Yeah, but that's still to me not a representation I guess that's the of Martin Luther right? King. Nah, that's not no hell no, not at all. Yeah, nah. Not at all, man. It could have been better, man. They could have done a lot better. I wonder how much they paid for that shit. Man, I'm pretty sure that thing costs a lot. There was like memes already about it, like of people like being disappointed and shit like that. Yeah, that's what's like that. You see right there, that looks pretty dope, dog. But it's just not it should have his face, his it head should, or yeah. something, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, yeah, it should be something like distinguishable, like his head. And his because if you, you just don't if you're trying know to, if you're trying to acknowledge somebody, yeah. Like, what, what, yeah, what, like, what is, is that? that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't look at that and think fucking Martin Luther King, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm-mm. That's crazy. What I, I don't know. I don't like that, though. That's not. Hell yeah. They could have done better with that, man. Already, you seen sure. that Tupac? You seen that Tupac? Oh yeah, over that there Tupac the one was bad too, <laughs> man. That Tupac one was bad too. That, man, that nigga looked like he was hunchback. You talking about the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in Atlanta or something. Was it? Was wasn't it? What Pac was supposed to look like? Like in today's time, if I ain't mistaken, right? That's what the statue was. I think so. Yeah, it wasn't like supposed to be a statue but, of Pac back, back then. Back back then but, like what he would look like if he was still alive today, yeah. type shit. Hell yeah. Already, man. I wanna uh talk about this would probably we gonna probably take a little bit of time talking about this. So we're gonna talk about the local rap scene here for a minute. You know what I'm saying? How y'all mm. feel about the local rap scene and the way it's going right now and the movements that different people have going on right now and shit like that. Let's just let's get into the local rap scene for a minute. Shit. I wanna know what single things about it, man. Shit, it's on it's on the come up, honestly, like it's like at every level, like people that just started making music, people that's been making it for a while, and then the people that's been like making it for years, like everything's like progressing and like developing its own sound. It, it's sounding good. You feel me? Like yeah. At every level, it's not just like oh, uh, the old heads going crazy or the young dudes going crazy. Not like everybody's going crazy, and it, it's just great to see because yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna lie, man. The city turned up right now, though. Facts. Hey, on some real shit, the city turned up right now. Everybody's going hard, man. Oh God. Everybody's going hard, man. Your gym tunes going hard, man. You're going hard. You know what I'm saying? I just uh, feel Jay like. Jay Stacks and them, they're going hard, bro. Yeah, I feel like once we see one person can really do it, like, I feel like that shit's contagious right now. So everybody know that they can get to that level, you know? Like, oh, yeah, it's achievable, okay, man. Okay, well, then let me ask you this. As as someone coming from the younger crowd, y'all don't look at a Ian Dior or Kevin Abstract as someone who has done it? I do. So pers- personally, I do because okay. they they came from Corpus. Like no matter if they left right when they got big or whatnot, like they came from Corpus. Like I legit like played basketball against N D or and shit. So like already, like I I know the shit. We was both on JV. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. already, but yeah, yeah, I mean yeah, they they made it from Corpus. So for sure, hell yeah. Do you do you feel that? Uh, let me see. Do you feel like there's like gatekeepers here? Like I said, you ain't gotta really say nobody name, and I'm not even just people. And do you feel like they like it's sometimes like when there's like maybe concerts going on at certain venues that it's almost looked at. Do y'all look at it like? Cause I don't know. Maybe I feel like I would look at it like, oh, well, I ain't a part of that old school crowd, so I don't even. There's no reason to even try to get on that show. Yeah, uh, 
I feel like. Do you try to fit in more like with the with the younger crowd, or is it not even just you in general? Like, do you as a youngster, as someone coming from the younger generation of rappers and corporates, like, do you, would you be looking towards trying to find more shows directed towards youngsters, or just at this point, it's just whatever a nigga can get on is trying to get on that's gonna be some credible type shit. Yeah, I feel like looking looking at shows and shit like that, like if you know that. I make a totally different style of music. You make like some soulful music and I make, let's just say country. That's not going to benefit me by getting on that show. So yeah. some people just be hopping on shows just to hop on shows. Yeah. But it's like, bro, like at the end of the day, however you look at it, like those people are there for that main artist or that type of music. They're not there for you. So Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I always look at it though, like as far as like say, if you're going to pay for a slide or open up for somebody at like a concrete street or a Brewster street, you better as I'm, I guess I'll say Bruce, uh, concrete street more. Cause that's more of like the bigger stage. Let's yeah, just say yeah. you're paying fucking 2000, 2500 to open up for somebody that's coming and it's going to be on the big stage at, at uh, concrete street. You better look at that as an opportunity to, yeah, those people aren't coming there to see you, but you're looking, but you, you got better a chance at, to expose yourself. You yeah. got a chance you know to saying? expose yourself and make people who didn't come here to see you leave here as new fans of you Facts. just based upon the show that you put on. So in my mind, whenever you're doing something like that, it's almost like you could just go out there and waste your goddamn money or you could go out there and not necessarily get a immediate return but you can still get a nice return hey nice. if you leave there and get 10 new followers to me that's that's a good that's start it, you know what i'm saying it, you know what i'm saying it's worth it man Facts, not nah, yeah nah you just gotta you just gotta know your demographics man that's all it is man know man. your demographics know who you're trying to target man and that's 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 really all it is man don't be jumping on everybody else's show boy because you know what man overexposure is a motherfucker too facts. you know what i'm yeah, saying facts, facts. Facts. Hell it is yeah. a motherfucker especially around here in the city man because the city's small bro like, and honestly, man, well, there's like, what, 400,000 people here, right? Like I said, small, yeah, man. We're not, yeah, we're not yeah. even at a million, man. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. We're smaller than a lot of the other places, man. So especially over here, because, you know, over here, it breaks off into crews and shit like that, man. You know what I'm saying? And so it's it's just, yeah, overexposure happens, bro, especially in a small city like this, man. If you're really trying to do something, man, you got to get up out this motherfucker, bro. Facts. You know what I'm saying? You got to get up out this motherfucker. You got to hit that road, bro. Really, not honestly, man. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Because you know what? You're doing shows for 10 motherfuckers over here. You could be doing shows for 20 motherfuckers over there in Austin. And you could be doing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how you build your fan base up, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you had did recently a while back. You basically went out to Austin and just started trying to build some relationships just straight up, just from the ground up, huh? From the ground, bro. Like, I legit went out there for like like a month, two months. And my cousin, he now my acting manager. Like, we was just like, hey, bro, we just going to go to 6th Street. Try to tap in with some DJs and just, you know, try to push. And then uh, we met this uh, DJ, DJ Dre Day, my dog, RIP. He's like, bro, your song hard as fuck. We about to get this shit playing in all of 6th Street or whatnot. We oh, had, like, really? five different clubs. But it's like, I didn't, know, I didn't know how far I could take it until I, like, left out of Corpus. You yeah, know what I mean? Like exactly. It's like, okay, damn, okay. like You heard about this, Corpus not playing your song and shit like that. Yeah. And then you took it somewhere else and they were just, they were up on it type yeah, shit. Yeah, so that that's a that's a big eye-opener for, I guess, up-and-coming artists or any yes, artist, and, period. Hey, and one thing too, bro, they do show you love on that road, bro. That's you tell right. people you're from Corpus Christi, man, they were, they were like, what, for real? I'm telling you, man, I was over there in Dallas, man. I was doing three shows a week over there, bro, when I was living over there. You know what I'm saying? And everybody was chilling. Everybody was like, man, you from Corpus. That's dope, that's dope, that's dope. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? People love you on that road, man, because you know why, man? It takes a lot, man, for someone to step out the comfort zone, man. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Do y'all, do you feel like, like, people, the youngsters, like, I think a lot of the older generation feels like, oh, people hating, hating, a lot of corporate rappers feel that other rappers hate on them just because everybody's doing the same shit. And, and yeah, rap is a competition, but, like, I think a lot of the youngsters, I see a lot of the youngsters working with each other more than a lot of the people that are like my age and my generation Facts. type shit. It's it's crazy because legit, like it's so many hard underground artists right now, like in Corpus alone. Like it's like we look at each other's music and it's like, damn, like we can gain they fans too. Like oh, we yeah, gonna yeah. tap in. Like it's it's low key a community down here, like the underground scene, like yeah. real underground scene. Legit, uh, I could pull it up. My dog from Hit or Miss, uh, he's out in Pennsylvania. He does like blogs and shit. Already, and he hit me up. He was like, "Bro, I heard that sh 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 song, bro. Yeah, yeah. like that person's yeah. from Corpus, bro. Like you know him." I was like, "Nah, I don't, I don't know him personally, but yeah, he's from Corpus. That's where I'm from." He's like, "Bro, send me a couple of artists. Uh, we gonna make like a top eight list for Corpus of like underground artists." Oh, really? So yeah. I legit sent like all of the 
underground artists that I listen to from Corpus, I sent them that shit. And they made like a little uh, blog post. Oh, yeah, I saw that, man. That was good shit, bro. Yeah, so like, yeah, underground going crazy right now. Like, it's, it's, it's up for sure. Hell yeah. Nah, it is, man. I, I did even the old good, heads too. Like, not old. I'm not trying to call y'all old, but like, y'all, <laughs> <laughs> y'all, y'all be on y'all shit. Like, for real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Fact, I'll, I'll accept that. Nah, but yeah, music scene corporate is looking good. I think I posted the other day. I was like, it's looking nice. Like, it's looking, it's just looking good. Like, hey, everybody, everybody's hitting right now, man. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's hitting right now. How did you build your relationship with like Fat Man and like them? I just, it came organically, legit. He seen a snippet on uh, Facebook. And he oh, was yeah. Like, shout out Fat Man. What's the deal? Yeah, shout out my dog uh, Fat Man the Balls. He was like, you, you hard, like, nephew. Like, let's let's get it, whatnot. Yeah. And then he had me on the show. And then we just started, started working, working from working. there. Yeah. Hell, yeah. That's what's up. Right. Hell, yeah. Yeah, because, man, it's, it's, it's very rare that you see, like, the youngsters working with the, uh, the, with older, the older heads. Fans, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Down here, like. So to me, I, I really salute that shit. Like that's one th- thing I really honestly. Salute. We think y'all don't fuck with our music. Honestly, what you mean? We think y'all old heads don't fuck with our music. So that's why we don't like. Well, I I I, yeah. I feel that way. I feel that way too. I feel like a lot of the older heads don't even give the youngsters a hip a uh, chance. But I'm I'm a I'm a DJ and I fuck with like everybody. Like my yeah. my scene is most of the cats that are downtown and most of the cats that are downtown. Besides Dusty and them, like most of them are, are like the youngsters. Young, you know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah. So I fuck with like the older rap scene and I fuck with like the younger rap scene. And honestly, I probably fuck with the younger rap scene more, more than I fuck facts. with the older rap scene. You I'm know what I'm saying? Facts, because yeah. the younger rap scene, they always got something going facts. on. Like shit, it don't matter. Like what they, they, they got shit move, going on. They, they, they exchange now on a goddamn Wednesday. Yeah. Did you ever go to any of the CC Fridays? No, I heard about it though. That was right before I started making music. I'm wondering if that's a younger age than you, because I was really old in that motherfucker. Like, for real. <laughs> no I, shit. I heard about that though. Yeah. They were young. I mean, I maybe just enough to drink or something, because they was out there drinking free. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, 21. Yeah. <laughs> but I know a lot of the young crowd yeah. dipped in there one way or another, whether they were part of their circle or just heard about it and let me go keep doing that shit. But I feel like, like you say too, I feel the same way. I feel like it maybe is getting a little accepted now, but I've always felt that way too that the older heads didn't really give like the younger or the new up and coming rappers a chance type yeah. shit. And that goes back to me saying like, does, does the younger generation feel like that there's gatekeepers within the local music scene to where it's like, well, damn, if there's only 10 sh- slots for the show, but every show there, you can guarantee that it's going to be these six names on that show. So if I ain't one of the four that got a chance to get a sl- like, slot, yeah. then, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to do our own thing type shit. Like, that's what I'm saying. Dude. Like, is there gatekeepers? Because sometimes I'll be feeling like, like there's some of these older heads try to be gatekeepers to the local music scene whenever... Bro, the local music scene is just wide open for Facts. any and everybody. Yeah, like, everybody. shit, everybody. I don't give a fuck how old you are, yeah. how young you are. Like, Facts. this shit is wide open to any and everybody. Care, I, don't about, I don't care about what you did back in the 90s, Facts. dude. You know for what I'm real. saying? Like, on some real shit. There ain't no J Prince of Corpus that's just signing. You know everybody, what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> there might be a should. But <laughs> <laughs> like, the thing is, like, uh, we got to <laughs> 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 like we gotta Let's distinguish that though, cause it'd be like a, a lot of old heads or young heads that try to like boost their credibility or whatnot. Like nigga, a old nigga be like, shit, yeah, I used to work with so and so and so back in nineteen, whatever, whatever. Nigga, yeah. I wasn't Ooh. alive. I don't know that. Who? Like so, like. And it ain't like, some rapper that you don't even know. You yeah, know yeah. <laughs> it's like so if you know, credibility wise, like in music, you just gotta distinguish if it's legit or not. If yeah, it, if that's shit legit, I'm gonna say yeah, it like yeah. this, bro. Check this out, bro. If you ain't got no connections to help nobody out, bro, you're not no gatekeeper, fam. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, like, you gotta stay the hell up out the way of that shit. Dog. Let the little youngsters run, bro. Let them do what they do. It's a whole new day and age, man. You know what, dude? The internet, dude, is a motherfucker, dude. You know what the internet did? It kill gatekeepers, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, it made everyone a gatekeeper. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Can. You don't like the way this is done? You can go ahead and go do your own thing. Yeah, yeah. Your phone is literally what the It's a camera. Is. Yeah. All you got to do is just <laughs> boop, boop, boop. 
Yeah. Shit, now you don't yeah. even need a mic. Shit, if you really want to get down to it, you yeah, can you pull that be, motherfucker out and just record. Be like this and be like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> shit. So, I mean, it gave everybody the access to a voice. Yes, sir. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Before that, you ain't going to hear everybody. You just going to hear the people who could have afforded the studio time. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You see, that's back back then. That's when the gatekeeper thing was real big. You know what okay, I'm saying? Okay, but then at the same time, what about being like back then, you're an up and coming rapper and you're not tapped in with the scenes that the scene really that much. So there's no social media to where, oh, there's fucking UGK coming to Club 54. How can I get on that show? Like, unless you just know the nigga that's throwing the show, whereas to now, you can just see that flyer and then yeah. basically hit up the, hit fucking, up the promoter. The promoter. Yeah. Like, hey, what's up? You getting shot? You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think it kind of goes both ways. Like it opened it up and like. It changed, though. Yeah. The internet, yeah, the, the, the internet changed everything, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's like crazy. the social media, it changed everything, man. Hell yeah. Look, this dude just it's got hurt right now. Yes, it is. Yeah, exactly. You all the access you want to the world, but it's also going to take all your privacy. Exactly. 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 Well, I feel like if you're trying to do some shit that's you're trying to get the public to support and you're trying to get people who don't know you to support, you almost have to for dish all that privacy shit. Like you can't really be trying to be a private person, but then you're trying to get people to, 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 to support you and shit yeah, like that curse. in this day and yeah. age shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy. For sure, for sure. Okay. Oh, yeah, really. That's true. You don't get to be a star and be private as fuck. I mean, I guess that's, you can to a, to a degree, an extent, extent a but too, you a, gain more fans by people being feeling like they could relate to you. Oh, they see you eating a fucking regular fucking McDonald's yeah, meal, and yeah. you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, you're connected to him. You're yeah. connected to him. I sat at that booth. Yeah, I was yeah, right yeah. there. I yeah, was right yeah. there, man. I mean, they treat that like, uh, I mean, like Selena's, you know, the, the motel that was there. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Like, hell yeah. Yeah. On some weird shit, like I stayed in the same motel. The same room, but that's yeah, that's weird, shit man. Like that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, exactly. Top That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's top of the yeah. Oh, you're a fan? I bet you didn't go there. Man, no you ain't that much of a fan. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's wild, man. People really did that shit. Yeah, yeah hell yeah. They got the Are fanatics you and shit Something like that. There? Man, there's that dude that pulls up downtown to that Selena statue like every day. And I want to say he gets off and cleans it up and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I heard about him. It was a few years ago, this big artist, uh, female, I forgot her fucking name, but she went and kissed the Selena. Yeah. Like she crossed over the little gate and kissed her on the lips. Corpus went wild, like you know, what the fuck is this bitch? Doing? No shit. Oh yeah, I think I kind of remember some shit no, like that. Other people were like, the like, man, she loves Selena that much. Like, so yeah. It was kind of like it was kind. Of, the love is crazy. Yeah. Like, the love can be crazy, and that's where your privacy is gone, even after death. Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Hell yeah. I want to piggyback off of that with to uh, I saw a post with uh, Lil Bow Wow basically saying that we need a hip hop retirement fund and that we need to look out for our legends and basically that legends nowadays are just stuck with a bottle in their mouth and a couple of dollars in their pocket type shit. Do y'all feel? How do y'all feel about that? Is it on the artists to just save their wealth that they accumulate over the years to be able to live after they're not making records? Is it based upon contracts that you sign to where you need to be able to, you need to sign a contract to where you can eat off your music for the rest of your life? Like, what does that all come down to? What do y'all think? I think it really comes down to, I mean, like, I can't, man, at one point in time, those dudes were accumulating millions of dollars, man. Or if not, if not a millions of dollars, they were holding at least a hundred thousand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I don't, it's not my fault that you squandered your money, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. You know, like. At the end of the day, you're a person, you're a man, you're a woman. Like, you, you, you should know, it. like, when you pass away, you need to have everything. You need to have everything situated. You yeah. see, that's coming from a younger man, too. You know what I'm Hell saying? Hell yeah. 
really? It's just I, I think I think the thing is though, man. From back then, dude, people weren't you know they weren't really money literate, man. You know what I'm saying? They don't really know what was, what was really going on. They were just signing whatever, or I don't know how the hell that was going on. But at one point in time, they were they had a lot of money in their hands and they could have did something with it. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Hell regardless, yeah. regardless if it was a million dollars, regardless if it's a hundred, or regardless if it's fifty thousand dollars, they could have did something with it, man. So do you you don't feel as if record labels should uh, set their artists up with retirement plans as if if you work a regular job? Or how does that work? If you work a regular job, like is it on you like to set up a retirement plan for like how does that work? Unless is it only if you work for a big corporation? Like how does that work? Lick it up. In their choice, but they yeah. you see right there. Look, see, look, lick it up in their choice. They made millions. It could, it's called manager money. Us poor folk have to work until at least sixty-five and never come close to what a hip hop artist makes. And that's facts, dude. That's facts. It's the same thing as on people that it's the same thing as on people that are they, they get mad, man. Of uh, they're living over there in them six them six room home homes and shit like that, and they be talking shit about people having food stamps, though. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not the pe- It's it's not our fault, man. That you're fucking. That you can't. That, downgrade man you yeah. know what i'm saying i feel like i mean because like how to manage your money is i like a retirement plan isn't that like you got to work a certain number of years to get that so if record labels gonna have that you gotta have like a a time frame with how long until you get that and like retirement is like a long time probably like 60 years till you get to that and most rappers are probably gonna get signed when they're around their 20s to yeah. early 30s type yeah. shit. So, so it's like you're not gonna like you're gonna be down with Def Jam for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Yeah. Like 30 yeah. years of yeah. longevity. Like people work hard. So now nah, I feel like you just gotta you gotta know. It sucks that it's like that, but it's just yeah. yeah. It's just you just make poor choices in your life, man. I'm sorry, man. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. I'll buy you a beer every now and then. I'm like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like already. All right. I saw an article with Funk Master Flick said that he will start back playing six nine music. Because many of our favorite rappers have cooperated with law enforcement anyway. So, fuck it. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's crazy. I mean. Yeah, Funk Master Flex said that he was he was he going to start playing because he was like one of yeah, the ones. Yeah, but they're, they're trying to push that agenda, though, though, that it's okay to snitch and shit like that, man. That's some New York shit or what? <laughs> nah, they're just trying to push that agenda, man. Like, look, okay, even with Gunner, man, people were... People were are like trying to protect Gunner from saying, "Oh, he's not a snitch. He's he's a snitch. He clearly snitched. It's right there in the it's right there in the fucking video, dude. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, You can't go any way about it, man. They do snitch, man. You know what I'm saying? They're just trying to make it a norm, man. Because a lot of because you know what, man. At the end of the day, dude, a lot of these artists, dog, they're not really like that, bro. They're 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 acts, dog. They're musicians and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So I got a question for y'all. So like, if y'all, it's like an honest question. If y'all like on stand. And like your whole life on the line, like you snitching or. Well, I mean, it, it depends. It depends on the situation. You see, you, cause you if, you ain't, if you went gunner situation, if I was okay, look, if I was in gunner situation, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna talk from experience because I've, I've been in prison for ten years, bro. And uh, the way that I, the way that I see gunner situation, bro, is that you shouldn't have got yourself involved into that. Yeah, shit. yeah. you know what I'm saying. You already knew what was going on. Yeah. Regardless of regardless of anything. Yeah. Regardless of you, you knew exactly what the fuck Young Thug was doing, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, why, why you're you're right there reaping the benefits of him doing all yeah, this other fucking yeah. shit? So why are you gonna back up whenever this fool's in the shit? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Represent that shit in there too. Hold hold your nuts, bro. It's it's loyalty is not here no more, bro. You know what I'm saying? There's a thing. There's something called loyalty, bro, and yeah, it's yeah. not the it's 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 not there, bro. It's weird, man. It's these fucking these people are weird, bro. It's, it don't make no sense, man. And I'm like, if your homeboy got a trap house and you know this dude selling big dope out of there and you going over there chilling with him every Playing day, every day. And yeah. You know what I'm saying? Playing you know this dude's going to get kicked in eventually. And when you get charged with the crimes, you can't sit there and try to snitch on your boy because just like you say, if you if if he taking you out to eat and doing all this shit, helping you out, you know what I'm saying? Your rent dude, he helping you pay your bills and shit, whatever you on hard times and shit like that. But then the top cup like this, like... You sh- in my mind, you shouldn't have been even going over there to, yeah, to oh, begin with. Eyes to yeah. begin you shouldn't with. Have you been going over there. You knew, yeah. like, whenever you put yourself in situation, you know what comes with being in that situation. Yeah, all the time it might not come, but there's a slim chance that it's going to happen. Yeah. Though. Well, look, dude, it, it, fuck six nine. <laughs> <laughs> facts. Fuck six nine. I see him. 
I see you, Felipe. I feel the same way, man. I feel the same fucking way. You see, like, since now, he knew what he was getting himself into, dude, fucking yeah, with them dudes. Yeah, man. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. And I feel like with 6 9 like, he kind of, he kind of, like, got railroaded, but at the same time, like, what was the situation with, with they wanted, they wanted uh, the Scotty, or it was some, uh, some shootings that had went down, right, or some shit like that? I don't like, really know the whole story. Yeah, I don't really know the whole either. story with that shit either, but I what are they offering that nigga like a whole bunch of fucking years and shit like that? Like, yeah, well, yeah. I know that I know there was some shootings and some kidnappings or some shit like that. Something happened with with that shit. They just picked the weakest link and just <laughs> yeah, that's all it was. <laughs> Threw that nigga a bunch of time and then he folded. They say, you the weakest link. Goodbye. They already knew. Mm-hmm. But even but even six nine said that too on one of the podcasts. Man, he goes he said that he was sitting right there in the jail cell. Man, he's on his first night and he was watching something. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna snitch, dog. Like, fuck this shit. That's what he said, yeah, too? Yeah, that's exactly what he said. He's like, I'm, I'm going to say fuck this shit. God damn. You know what I'm saying? He yeah, he really, like... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but when you're getting down and you running with people like that, you 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 got to accept the consequences that, that go with, it, with man. it, regardless if you 100% doing what they doing not. or not. Because yeah. you just... If you chilling with a nigga who... It's almost like if you chilling with a nigga who... Shoots is a shooter and got bodies on them. You can't sit there and look at that nigga crazy when niggas start shooting Dude, at yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you. Exactly. You can't trip, bro. You can't trip. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, you know what it was, hey, You know what this nigga do? Like, so yeah. that's just what it is, shit. Yeah, you can't trip when them dudes are doing that shit, man. Hell yeah. You yo. already know what's going on over there. Why you want to go fuck around over there, dog? So as far as the, the Funk Master Flex saying, because he's a radio, like, what is he, like, I want to say, like, a DJ on, like, Hot 97 in New York or something, he's basically saying he's putting 6 9 back in rotation because at this point... I wonder what kind of bag that fucking 6 9 manager gave him, dog. God damn, you think it's has something to do with no, money? No, it always has something to do with the bag, bro. God damn. It always got something to do with the bag. See, look, 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 look at all that money that 6 9 holding right there. You don't think he fucking stayed half of that to fucking Funk Flex? Say, look, I give you fifty thousand dollars right now, man. You just go ahead and say you're gonna play my shit. Because yeah, other rappers are snitching too, so gonna, so that makes it just like you say, gonna fucking. They normalize. They're, they're, gonna, trying, they're gonna, trying to normalize, normalize it, it, man. They're, they're trying to normalize it. it. And they're doing it through the fucking the hardest way you can through hip hop. Through hip hop, yeah. Gangsta music. They're breaking it down slowly, though. You know what I'm saying? They're starting to use people's lyrics against them in court and all that shit, though. They're breaking it down slowly but surely, man. You know what I'm saying? You gotta watch out who you fuck with, man. At the end of the day, man, you just gotta watch out who you fuck with, man. If you know people are over there fucking up, dog, don't be around them niggas, man. Facts. God damn. Let's see, I got another topic. I mean, Go ahead. But so many people, like, have you seen what he's still doing? 6 9 Like, even a funk, like, fuck funk. Yeah, you fuck. You don't have to do that. Yeah. Like, it's being done without the radio. Like, the radio is probably starving for him. Yeah, facts. You but know you know what? You know what's like, crazy, bro, is that it's we. It's not the other way around, because he's still getting the push and all that shit from himself and the fans that are around. that are around him and shit like that. Like I said, the internet, bro. Internet has no gatekeepers. All you can do whatever the fuck you want if you have a platform. Well, really just catching up. Yeah, he's just yeah. he's just trying to catch up, man. It's just, man, you know what? Really, and honestly, man, we've been glorifying snitches, dude, forever, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, they got they got movies of snitches, bro. Goodfellas, mm-hmm. fucking snitch, dog. You know what I'm saying? That's what he said right there. Blow snitch. You know what I mean? To where they they make you be make, a fan of the fucking yeah, snitch, nigga. They put they, they, they present they it in the angle to make you feel sorry for the fucking yeah. snitch and shit like that. I mean, they 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 fucking they normalize it, man. They glorify we glorify snitches over here, bro. You know what I'm saying? Don't let me call names. Who? Flex. Don't oh let me yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Oh yeah, but I mean, shit. We we can say what well, Snoop they they had they had claims that Snoop Dogg was a snitch. I mean, bro, but like, look, man. That's crazy. Look, bro. We glorify snitches, man. You know what I'm saying? Please. Goddamn right. <laughs> he snitched. R. Kelly didn't uh, snitch, but he had some crazy <laughs> shit. Are we fair in cases and shit? Like, you know. Yeah. And we put levels to shit like the law does. Yeah. Man, but you know, they R. Kelly's a bad man, though, bro. He's a bad man as an artist. As an artist, yes. He's also a bad, bad man. man. He's also a bad yeah, motherfucker. Bad, bad man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the same, yeah. Yeah. That's my jam too, motherfucker. 
already. Did y'all see the post a couple of weeks ago about like the Burger King downtown? There was like she got shared a couple times. The girl was like basically saying, "I need workers ASAP" or some shit that all the workers had walked out or some shit. Downtown over here for yeah. Real? Y'all didn't see that post? No, nah, what happened? The uh, I think the original post may have been deleted, but the uh, girl had basically she was like the manager at the Burger King downtown, and she basically made a post that said. I'm looking for workers hiring ASAP. Basically, my whole goddamn, uh, what is, like the whole employee, all my employees basically just quit and didn't come back. I want to say this is around New Year's time or some shit. And I want to say that a lot of people were like, like, hell yeah, I need a fucking job and shit. And they went down there. <laughs> <laughs> so they went down there. And then I saw a couple of days after that, just someone made a post. Basically saying, Burger King downtown has been the worst job I've ever worked at. Now, I know y'all seen the post they made looking for employees. We applied, got the job, worked. We missed, we missed one day and were told we were written up. Come to find out, we were fired without any notice. God <laughs> damn. Was it a Burger King or a Burger? Burger King. Burger King downtown next to Strike. Hey, bro, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I went over there one time, man. That fucking manager was a straight dig, bro. Bro, that bitch is ghetto <laughs> as fuck. Yeah, it is ghetto as fuck. They had them buns be chilling up in that bitch and everything. Yeah. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. I ain't never been in that house. Oh, oh, for real? Hey, you don't want to go up in that <laughs> mother. That shit dirty. Someone goes right here. Oh, the saying goes, that the burgers are made in the same fire as the nuggets, fries, onion rings, you name it. They don't know how to time... They don't know how to time, so Monday we served somewhat raw burgers. What? Equipment was broken for two days, God so damn. they did this to stay open. Man management sucks. Goes back to what that <laughs> you <said. laughs> I told you that, man. They throw man. change and receipts at you, and there is a problem with food. And when there is a problem with food, they tell you there is nothing they can do, and for you to leave, in no way do they help you. Kitchen is not clean at all. No hair nets are being worn. Neither are oh, uniforms. Damn, she going crazy. Yeah, she going in. Whole kitchen crew is convicted. By details, bro. She whole going in. Whole kitchen crew is convicted <laughs> felons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, that's the only job they can get, man. Stop. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's hey, you crazy. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, it could be in, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Let me read the post. Trying to sing it was not. No, 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 hey, I'm gonna the two chill. Oh my bad. He goes. There was. <laughs> oh man, hold on a second. They don't give hours, and their favorite employees. They they don't give hours, and they favorite employees. They cheap you out your paycheck or don't pay it all. <laughs> <What the laughs> Hey, yo, kitchen cops need to be over there ASAP. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> hell no. So no schedule is made. We didn't know we were supposed to go in. We called no answer to store or the managers. No training. They just throw you to the wolves and, and scream and yell when you do something <laughs> wrong. <laughs> but don't take time to explain what you did wrong. Oh, shit. Headsets are charged and... At all their drive through headsets are not charged at all for for drive through isn't available during the day. You can sit and wait over 15 minutes before they do take your order. That's crazy. Damn. There ain't no fast food at all. How the fuck is that place still open? And that was the one you said you had the bad experience and yeah. shit too. I'm telling you, man, when I went up in there, there was like there was like two or there's like there's like two to four bones chilling up in that motherfucker, bro. God you damn. They were chilling in that bitch, dog, and then uh they fucked, they fucked up on an order, man. And you know you know how women are when you fuck up with order, dog. You know what I'm saying? My wife went up straight up in that motherfucker started talking straight sh cash shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? And then fucking uh, dude, like, fucking manager, he, he really didn't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was just like, hey, well, are you done? Like, you done? It was, yeah, it was just, it was a bad experience, man. It was just a bad experience over there, bro. Hell yeah. I, think I, I, I feel like But they don't give a fuck about nothing. Burger tastes like the fucking picture looks, you know? Well, isn't like, that how fast so food has always been, though? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I guess. And when I was young, I don't think I gave a fuck. 
Like you just looking for somebody. You have the occasional person who wants to give you that fucking display burger, and then there's me. It's like, man, I can't wait till it's fucking nine o'clock. Get the fuck out the way, right? Yeah. God damn. Yeah, I couldn't work fast food. I did that shit for like two weeks, a couple times. That was it, bro. God. Yeah, I worked at Chick Fil A, but that shit was like on point. Like every little fucking thing is like boom, boom, boom. Like they, they're like they on that shit. I think my cousin said Starbucks. Yeah. Customer service place she goes. That shit yeah. crazy. It's always a positive attitude. You don't catch nobody out there taking the order pissed off. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. like we have you. Like. <laughs> yeah, it's like I have a pep talk before you go to work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Facts. Sam's Club, and they wanted us to do some kind of fucking cheer before we started our fucking uh, orientation. Oh, we had shit. To learn this little chant from Sam's Club. Do you remember it? Nah, hell no. <laughs> God damn. Hell no. <laughs> but you got them out of that shit or what? <laughs> nah, like, so They're all smoking weed up I in the back, though. I was pushing carts in the parking lot, right? Yeah. They would only give us water to fucking drink with a cooler outside. I'm like, we're at Sam's Club. You got fucking cases of Powerade and Gatorade. Like, let me get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> they let me one time and open that gate, bro. I ain't stop after that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I had some leftovers. in the fucking cooler. Take them bitches. God damn. They were like, you know, we got to write all this stuff off. I'm like, okay, you're the manager. That's like what you do, right? That's what okay, you do. cool. I'm going to just walk off with it. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Already. Fucking Whack 100 was on Clubhouse basically saying a predominant popular rapper got his hard drive stolen and uh, hit up Whack 100 and asked Whack 100 to get the hard drive back and he would pay him. Two hundred thousand dollars. Now I don't know if this is true or not, but if you lose a hard drive, are you willing to dish out a bag to get that hard drive back? Y'all are rappers. What do y'all mm. say? Shit, if that's your whole catalog or it got some fire ass shit on there, shit, y'all, yeah, I'm gonna pay. Hey, have y'all seen that? Have y'all seen that? I think it was one of them videos, man, where Young Boy was talking about setting one of them hard drives for like twenty million. I, I seen that on Instagram. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Young, uh, young, uh, NBA yep. young boy, man. He had like three or four hard drives, man. He's he's uh he's a uh, man. He's all uh, this one right here. I'll, I'll do. For, I'll, I'll I'll give it up to a label for about twenty million. Damn. And he's all uh, he's he's all uh, it's filled all the way up. He's all uh, you know what I'm saying. That was right before he signed too. Mm. Yeah. I think he signed like a hundred million dollar deal or some shit like that. But if it's worth it, yeah. Yeah, if it's worth it, it, yeah. If it's a hard drive full of trash, though, I mean, like, nah, I wouldn't do it. God damn. Well, cause you gotta think how much money you can make off of that shit, though. You know what I'm saying? If you got like features and shit like yeah, that, yeah, there, yeah. shit like that. Shit, fuck a feature. You might got a porno in that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that you don't want leaked out, right? Some shit like that. If it's a hard drive like, like that, you probably video just. Shit, like, oh. Yeah, that video. You ever watch that show? Yeah, that's a crazy fucking thing. So that leak. That show was so Seth Rogen right? because it was supposed to be what? So so fucking. Stole his tools and shit, right? So, yeah, that's kept his tools crazy. and everything. Yeah. He broke back in his house and took a fucking safe. And in that safe was a fucking... Tommy Lee, didn't want, Tommy Lee refused to pay the dude? Yeah. 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 Oh, shit. He, he, he wanted one thing. Next day, he was like, nah, I don't want that after all. Like, after they constructed and everything. Did that shit to that fool a few times. And then finally fired him and then kept his fucking tools. But the dude broke back in, stole the fucking safe with all kinds of shit in it. And one VHS tape. And it was a fucking porno. And he ended up selling the porno or what? He took that shit to uh, all kinds of different Yeah, people. they were trying he was trying to sell it to everybody. Wanna, they didn't want to touch it. Oh, because okay. Because of who it was, and then like somebody decided to do it with him, but like uh anonymous. Yeah. And then they ended up getting traced to the IP address and found out and all kinds of shit. Bro. Oh shit, That's god crazy. damn. Yeah. They got sued he got sued for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. He got sued right back. How much they suing for? All that money he made, huh? You got it right. Well, he fucked up and asked for a loan from somebody to get that thing. So oh, yeah, okay. And the people from the loan are now looking for him to fucking fuck his ass up because you know, yeah. they can't do nothing with the tape either without getting sued. Yeah. But by like, that time, bootlegs had dropped. Like, that was like the beginning of the bootlegs bootleg on, on fucking the internet. Yeah. All different websites. Like, too much to control, so they made nothing. 
damn. Oh, damn. Man. That's damn. fucked up, man. Yeah. God damn. What's that? That one that came out? It was like a special that came out on like one of the... No, I'm talking about the uh, the uh, documentary you're talking about. Yeah, it was on like Netflix, a, uh, right? It was uh, like an Amazon Prime show. Or yeah. Or some I, shit like that already. Okay. I think I've seen the fucking uh, previews of that shit. I nah, never watched it. We actually it, watched though. that shit, man. Oh, really? Fucking Seth Rogen is like the guy who steals the tape and shit. Already. Shit, y'all got anything else y'all want to chop it up with before we get up out of here? Shit, nah, I'm good, man. Shit, I just want to say what's up to everybody in the city, man. Love y'all, though. You know what I'm saying? We here. Shit, talk about your little deal real quick, man, while we're here. Let them know what you got going on. What maybe you got possibly coming soon. Oh, like yeah, that, yeah, man. Yeah, um, man, me and uh, me and AB DaVinci recently got signed to 1836 Entertainment, sure. man. You know, uh, it's it's wild, man. It's really is. I still don't believe it, really, in honesty, man. It still hasn't hit me, man. Like, I, like it's, it's, just, it's, it's a trip, dog, but it's, it's really a blessing, man. Uh, the label that we got with, man, fucking AG Gilly, man, he's... A1 with the shit, though. I didn't even know he was that deep into the music, man. And, uh, man, he threw me on features left and right and he gave, gave him his beats from all sorts of different people, bro. And it was just, yeah, dog, it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing, man. It's a different experience, bro. It's, uh, it's badass, man. It's, uh, it's a blessing, dog. It really so is. So what do y'all got out? Are y'all, like, finna, is that, like, building towards y'all working, like, to a, for a project that's coming out yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That? We're supposed to, we're supposed to, uh, we're working on an album right now. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Already. Working on an album right now, man. We're gonna, it's, it's gonna be... All the beats, man, are gonna be created right there. This and that, man. Or live instruments. It's gonna be studio. That's it's gonna hard. be a studio, a studio made album, man. You Damn, know what I'm saying? Hell That's yeah, hard. man, man. For fuck sure. Gonna be badass, man. man. Y'all be on the lookout for that, man. It's coming soon. Shout bro. out it's AB, coming soon. man. Shout out AB Davinci, man. Shout out the whole TMP for camp, sure, bro. You know what I'm saying, sure. man? We we really did it, man. We are on the road, man. We know what I'm saying. We we put a lot of work in, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's when I was talking about people. That's when I'm talking about, you know, coming back, leaving the city, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm living proof of that shit, though. That shit really does work, man. You know so what like, I'm saying? So, like, looking back at it, like, because, like, I guess you could say you at a point where, like, you feel like you made it. So, like, looking back at it, like, was it, like, worth it, like, the, the grinding back then? Like, when you wasn't signed to the label, when you was first starting out, I feel like probably you want to give up or not. You kept pushing through. Oh, dude, through, like, I, hey, I, I feel like I wanted to give up every day. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand something, too. I'm, I'm, I'm older than you, too, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, man, I'm thinking like, damn, okay. If it's, he missed the whole 10 years and I missed the, the whole 10 years. Game, That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Too, yeah. And then I missed the whole 10 years of my life, though. So I was really trying to catch up and yeah. shit. And it's just like. Yeah, but with both, bro. You know what I'm saying? A, from a person on the outside looking in, I would say that they made strategic, strategic moves. They didn't just jump on any and every show gotcha. that was like yeah. we were talking that's about that's what i was earlier, talking about right. oversaturating and this and, and that man you so got to pinpoint dude what, exactly you got to pinpoint what you're trying to do to man do demographics man you know what i'm saying you see like me i'm a mexican you know what i'm saying so i'm gonna go jump with the mexican crowd more than yeah. like you know what i'm saying you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just it just works that way, bro. You know what I mean? It just works. So they that were way. doing like the car show as yeah, far as yeah, like, you know, the, know like, yeah. that's car. more gonna be like a low rider car show. Yeah. It's gonna be like a whole bunch of Mexicans yeah. there. So that's why, like he's saying, like he do. You, like, you, you gotta know your demographics, exactly. man. You gotta know this. You know what I'm saying? It's it, it's a lot, dude. It's 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 a lot to do, man. Like it, you just don't. It's more than just paying somebody for a show fucking slot. Yeah, it, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into it, man. There's a lot that goes into it, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to yeah. think about it, man. But you got to get the whole game plan and shit. It's right like okay, there. like okay, like if I'm gonna go jump on this show, like okay, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not shooting no shots, no nobody this and that. But I'm gonna go jump on the show over here at the bridge, which they throw shows over there every week, and it's the same people over and over. Why am I gonna go put myself in that situation over there when I know nothing's going on over there? Right. You understand what I'm saying? So if I'm if I'm gonna jump on some shows and I'm gonna save some money and this and that, I'm gonna go put it on like you know we did the DJ Paul show over here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Something big, man. Because the thing is, is when you put out your EK, when you when you put out your EPK, labels look at that shit, bro. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They don't like they don't they don't know these niggas in the local area, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they, they, you're, you're you're saying that you're doing shows with these people. Like who the fuck are these? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you're doing shows over here, saying like you know, like like with our resume, we did shows with DJ Kane, dog. We did shows with fucking Baby Bash, Zero, bro. Fucking they were South Magic, by Southwest, dude. you know, what South I'm by Southwest, official dog. Artists on South by Southwest. Yeah, we're official artists on South by Southwest, that's dog. That's we right. dropped the bread to fucking be on the fucking official artist thing, dude. It's on the website and everything like that, dude. They was look at that shit, bro. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, bro, like okay, like you can have like you you could go ahead and go. You could do the same thing that a lot of the other people do. You can go buy views and you can go do this and do that, bro. None of that shit matters, bro. None of that shit matters, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's None of it matters, bro. Yeah, yeah. And so it's just, man, 
it's just you got to know your demographics, man. You got to be strategic about what the fuck you do, bro. You know what Hell I'm saying? Yeah. On on the real, man. That's that's what it really is, man. Make a game plan, dog. Right. You know what I'm saying? Make a game plan, especially with your team, dog. Hey, bro, really, man. If it, if it was just me, I wouldn't have made it, bro. I have a team behind me, dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I got DJ King, man. You know what I'm saying? I got fucking AV. I got every. You know what I'm saying? John Bell, dog. Like. I got people that 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 help me that help me do what I do. Yeah, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so even even on top of that though too, whenever labels like I said, whenever people the labels look at you and they see your they see your structures because that's that's the one thing that people are gonna do, man. They're gonna investigate you, bro. Yeah. Well, you then know I want to say this too, like I don't know, is this is this the thing? Because I feel like a lot of younger generation and maybe even a lot of these old niggas too look at it like I need to get sides so I could put out more content. Whenever a label isn't looking to sign you to put out more content on you, a label is looking for the person that already has content that they just want to put out. Yeah. As I always say, a label doesn't want to buy the machine, take it out the box, and have to put it together. They, they want to put buy together the machine, already. Take it out the box and plug that bitch straight into the wall. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like all they want to do, yeah, exactly. All they want to yeah. do is be able to boom, look, because look, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Check this out, dog. We're over there, right? I'm over, we're over there recording, bro. We're over there recording. It's the same shit. You want these motherfuckers to be impressed with you, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, when we're going to recording, man, this dude was showing people, dog. People coming in. He's like, hey, it's my artist. Check him out. Check this out. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead, rap. Boom. And go hit it. Da, 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 da. They, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a presentation, bro. It's everything, bro. Yeah, they, yeah. Have, they, they, they look at you, man. They see how you work, man. They see everything, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They see everything, bro. And so, if you have... Like I said, like really, man, and honestly, man, you 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 have say like a million, you have a million views, man, you have millions of followers and this and that, but then you go and then they send somebody they're like, Man, this dude's actually hitting on the internet, man. They send someone out to go check you out on the show, man. You got five people in the crowd. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's crazy. You know Hell what I'm yeah. saying? I think I think people don't they don't like nowadays they don't think about that. They just think, oh, okay, I can buy these these uh, views or whatnot. And it's going to go good. Nah, gonna go man. Good. Nah, you got to really analyze it. Like, motherfuckers going to fly out to see you to see if you like that. You got five people in the crowd, yeah. like you said. Yeah, you, you got bad as a lot of people it, it looks bad as it's fuck, just about to. It's just about the look. And to me, the look is like 50% of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because some people think it's all about the look. Some people just think it's all about the music. They think, shit, my music's fucking... Raw as fuck. I don't need no yeah. fucking videos. Yeah, they don't give a fuck like about that, none you know of that. What I'm saying when it's like, do you gotta you gotta have the whole package oh, and package. be able to put it all together because the labels and the big execs and A and R's they want like I say they want the person that's already in motion. They don't want to have to put the person in motion. Yeah, like yeah. they ain't, they this ain't the '90s no more where they trying to build fucking shit up like that type shit. Like yeah. now nah, they trying to find something that's already going and just. Keep yeah, it fucking man, going. Put their little push behind it and push it further, shit. Because the thing is, man, you got to understand, man, this is, you know, everything, especially with the music industry right now, everything's fast, man. They want everything pre-made, mm -hmm. man. Everybody right. wants everything pre-made, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you go to, when you go eat, when you go eat food, you want it pre-made. Right. Every, every, everybody wants everything made already, bro. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to sit there and have to take the time, man, and actually have to put you together, man. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Teach you how to move right. around, teach you how to do this and teach you how to do that, bro. They... You gotta learn. You gotta. These are things that you have to learn, bro. It's it's a lot of work, man. It's not. You just don't put a. You just don't put a video up on YouTube, man, and the motherfucking blows off. Hey. That's a rarity, yeah, man. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. That's a rarity, bro. Yeah. Them dudes, them dudes, them 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 dudes. Yeah. That's a blessing, bro. What happened yeah. with them Facts. dudes, man? That's a blessing Facts. with them, bro. bro. But at the same, time... that don't happen with nobody, bro. The same time, you know what I'm saying? Their their shit was shared to a channel because it didn't come out on their own channel it originally it came out on that catholic youth page yeah or, or fools gone wild or something or yeah. someone huh catatonic youth. yeah whatever this shit they came out on that shit so either they picked it up or they paid to get their shit posted on there but it goes back to strategic shit just yeah. like he yeah. just says like People just think, oh, I'm just gonna drop that shit on YouTube and it's gonna fucking and get it's gonna, millions it's of views. Millions of views. Like, man, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put this bitch on Facebook. For, and you then, might have to pay for the say cheese shit. You might have yeah. to pay for one of these blogs to fucking post yeah, it. There's nothing, you know what I'm dude, there's nothing wrong that's with that. That's called man. promotion. Yeah. A lot of people look at that like, oh, I ain't finna pay for this, man. That's that's okay. called promotion. In the '90s, early 2000s, we called that promotion, and you better have promotion. A part of your fucking budget. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the, you know, but you know what? Look, but, but look, but look. Everybody talks all that shit. shit, but you know what a label does? They put money behind marketing and promotion. Exactly. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So you got to do the same exact shit, though. Mm -hmm. 
And you got to do the same exact shit. Mm-hmm. And they be motherfuckers on those promotional pages that, like, they big names. Like, they really be looking at that shit, like, scouting and shit. Yeah. Like, hell yeah. Like, you hell never yeah. know, like, what the fuck. Like, no, nah, that's yeah. facts, dog. That's facts. You never know who the fuck is looking at your facts. shit, bro. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? You never know who's looking at your shit, bro. And that's the, what works with the share. When you ask somebody to share something, you never know who's on the other, other side. Well, if looking this at dude it. has fucking 100,000 followers on his page and he's asking 20 bucks for a fucking share and you know that you make music towards the his following I'm doing this shit. that's probably a good fucking you know what I'm saying a investment. good investment yeah. you know what I'm saying to do if if this dude is paid just generated towards punk rock and you have a hot punk rock song well yeah it would make sense but it would be a bad investment if you're on some trap shit and then you pay this dude, even if it is 20 bucks to invest in his page and his page is based upon some pump. other bullshit. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah, For real sure. shit. For it's, sure. It's just strategic planning, man. That's all it is, Hell man. Yeah. I don't really know what I'm saying. That's all it is, bro. Well, shit, Hendrix, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man, before we get up out of here, man. Shit, you know, shit, I became an artist out of Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, uh, Instagram personality as well, uh, you know. Just uh, glad to be on this podcast. You for know, sure, we talking sure. about some glad good shit tonight you. and shit. Yeah, just hopefully y'all keep tuning in. You know, a lot of funny topics coming up, a lot of controversy shit coming up, and just overall we just spreading news to the city. You know, Hell trying yeah. to you know do what we do. But yeah, that's it. For yeah, sure. big facts, big facts, man. Hey, bro, I'm proud of you, bro. Real on some real Hell shit. Yeah, I see yeah. you, bro. Tell me about, yeah, yeah, about your uh, show you got upcoming, man. This uh, weekend. Uh, uh, we gonna be in Houston. I forgot what the place is called, but uh, D Baby throwing a a little concert and he invited crime family out so we're gonna be out there yeah uh, hopefully yeah. shoot some music yeah. videos out there you know hell yeah shout yeah. out crime family shout out shout uh, out crime family shout, shout out crime family man in the boss, shout man. out everybody yeah man hell like we're yeah. going crazy like legit like people may not think it's just a word to the viewers people may not think that you grind it or whatnot but you know oh, nah, i know fat man i know fat man i'm talking about i'm talking about anybody like it you may feel like uh, People not seeing you, seeing what you're doing, you're but you're not obligated to show nobody what you're doing. Like yeah, just keep going. Motherfuckers gonna yeah. see that shit soon. Hell yeah, exactly. That go facts. for everybody, but yeah, we all gonna be up. Hell yeah, facts, man. Uh, for sure, man. Well, this is the Ride and High podcast. You know what I'm saying? Hold up, fucking freak wants to talk about one more thing before we oh, get up out of here, man. God. What's that, freak? <laughs> we gonna I guess we'll give a salute to the uh, the uh, Corpus Christi All Female Cipher Part Two that just dropped. Last week, if I ain't mistaken, three days ago. It dropped three days ago? Yeah, the females from Corpus got together and did a, a part two of their all-female cypher. Yeah, you could, you probably know about it more than I do. Is that they shot it at Frank's Spaghetti House off of Leverage. Oh, no shit? Yeah. Oh, that's dope. I really like what they've been doing from the last video they did with the, uh, in the, with the cars and stuff like that. And then they changed up the whole. The video yeah. concept hard as fuck. Okay, because yeah. I didn't see the first one. I saw the other one with the one in the car. Yeah. Keeper place. I saw like some behind the uh, some behind the scenes pictures and shit like that. That one was over there, you know, for a good staple in Corpus Christi. This is another one. Already. Uh, and to be honest, I don't think I've seen anybody shoot a video on here but Michael White. At French Spaghetti House? Yeah. That's a dope spot, man. Yeah, hell That's yeah. a dope spot. Yeah. Yeah, I fuck with French Spaghetti's house. Yeah. Lynn Bands. Yeah, a, uh, a lot of these artists I know, like Hey Renee, I know. Uh, let me see. Who else is in there? I'm sorry. I'm fucked up. I know M Thing Keeper. I don't know nobody else, though. I feel like when I listen to it, this is my opinion. I feel like they should put, uh, like, do two parts of it. Like, because some of the people that's on here, they sound like pop music, kind of. It's like not a rap cypher. Like oh, the really? first two. Oh, okay. So okay. I feel like they should do one themselves and then go into the ones that rap. Like a pop cypher? Yeah, mm-hmm. just to oh, really? make it combine better. But Well, they had the other girl that was in the part one. Uh, what's her name? It's Tina Marie. And she was kind of popish on there. Yeah. She was different from the rest. Oh, really? They're all rapping. And she was definitely a whole different uh, female artist popping. Uh, that shit hard, though. But yeah, I mean, they working just as hard too. Because I was saying, like Corpus is working, 
Yeah. Nah, corporate's working, dog. Yeah. Corporate's yeah. working. Yeah. Everybody's doing like something. Videographers, bro. bloggers, yeah. like everybody's everybody trying to get dude, to it. Dude, the blogs, dude, the podcast, though. You know what I'm saying? These people, right? Hey, Corpus is blowing up right now, bro. It's popping, bro. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? Hey, right now, man. Right now is the best time to be a part of this this, this city right here, bro. Because really, man, we're fi- we're fixing to pop, dog. Some real shit, dog. Hell yeah. We're fixing to pop, dog. All of us are, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, man. There's a lot of there's a lot of eyes looking at us right now, bro. People don't even realize it, man. For sure. For sure. And everybody's yeah. doing a part, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, for sure. Well, this is episode three of Riding High News, man. Appreciate man. the host, my dog Drew. Cinco Hendrix coming yeah. through. Freak man behind the scenes. And we out this thing, man. It's yeah, going down. See y'all later, man. It's your boy DJ Lil King, you know what I'm saying?